you can count on one hand the amount of bands that transcend everything. Can. Velvet Underground. There's only three left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is Chicago one of them? Chicago. <laughs> uh, England Dan and John Ford Coley. Oh, yeah. Good shit. And OCs. Now, I say that, and we have John Dwyer here. First of all, that was the most amazing uh, performance. That was just unbelievable. Thank and that's you, that's the new album. Yeah, in its entirety. And uh, yeah, it felt like a kismet to be in here with you doing it. You know? Yeah. No, that is so... First of all, the album is... That's just... That's mind-blowing. You... This is... It's like... Eh, eh, keep topping the thing and you got had the foul form and then now you're doing a... That's like you did a hardcore <laughs> album. So how... how so I, people were talking, you were talking, other people were saying, it's like, oh, this is the... The, the new wave type album yeah the, the popular but it's still obviously filtered through you and yeah. the band we have a very narrow scope considering uh-huh. how much wildly different kind of shit we uh it's okay to swear yeah, yeah 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 uh this is the kind of stuff we do uh is always got a thread through it you know yeah and so, this record's no different mm-hmm. and when does this stuff like does it reveal itself or do you go in with a vibe that you want to bring to it? Like how do these things, how do you end up there? These last two records were definitely like sort of preconceived, but no, no songs written until we sat down to do it. Uh, the last record was me and Tim mostly mm-hmm. sitting down and just coming up with parts together and having fun in my house. I was getting stoned with a drum machine and like sure. writing punk songs, you know, and mm-hmm. this record, because it was so keyboard centric was me and Tom doing essentially the same thing and bringing parts to the band. And then everybody would, sort of write their own pieces around what me and Tom had sort of brought in as like a, you know, demo. Yeah. But it was definitely, it is, it's partially, the idea is there beforehand sometimes, but definitely the reveal is a really nice, you know, dopamine injection yeah. for when we write in Israel. It's like, oh, that's actually fun and good and that works for us, you know. And then it starts to, everybody starts to put their, yeah. their thing to it. Yeah. yeah. Tim Hellman's like the cayenne pepper of the band, <laughs> okay. even though, even though he can't eat hot food. Okay. The irony. The irony yeah. of the spicy, spicy little musician. son of a bitch. Yeah, what's he eat? Mashed potatoes. What's yeah, he yeah. like? A... It's like a pancake guy, but but <laughs> but but his 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 parts are spicy. Mm-hmm. He's got a chain hanging on it, you know. Yeah. Now it's really amazing, and to be this far in, because I've been a fan for a very long time, and it just it's it's such a special thing to see. It feels like you're gaining momentum. This deep into the <laughs> into the run, it's a race to the finish. Yeah, yeah we'll but, see. <laughs> but it's like, where's the finish then? It's I just don't know. like this. I is... think Lemmy to me was like the, uh-huh. the pivotal person for me, where he was like, "I'm gonna die on stage," and then he practically did. And I was he like, almost, "You know what? Yeah, I'm okay with that." You know, yeah. like my my CPA recently, I closed down my 401k because I was like, "I don't need this." And he's like, "What are yeah. you crazy?" He's like, "Don't close your 401k." <laughs> uh-huh. And he's like, "What are you gonna do?" And I was like, yeah. "When?" And he's like, "When you get old." I was like, "Hey, I'm already old." Yeah. B, Mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep playing. I was like, I'm yeah. gonna, I'll be in a chair. Eventually, I'll just be blind and I'll be like, just moving my sure. pinky. Like, you know, they'll yeah. set me up with like a Hawkins style thing where I can compose from a chair. You'll yeah. end up like the, uh, like, like the way Brian Wilson suddenly he's got 16 people on stage and all he has mm-hmm. to do is just go mm-hmm. a couple <laughs> yeah, times yeah. and they all the harmonies are there. Yeah, somebody you... to zip up my pants and make sure I don't put my socks on <laughs> over my shoes. Uh-huh. Yeah, people would be like, <clears throat> oh, he's. Uh... It's not as energetic as we, it used we, to we be. have been talking about a franchise where I just uh-huh. get a younger man who kind of looks like me, so okay. say like a forty year old. We can keep yeah. him like rotating every four or five years. Sure, you do it like uh, like Menudo. Yeah, used yeah to get be. a casting call for a square faced, pink skinned uh-huh. Irish moron. <laughs> get him up there, uh-huh. you know. Yeah, the o- it'd be OC's experience. Yeah, you really exactly, have to put yeah. some name on like it, the, like, like that. the in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So, but but how deep are how long in every iteration we're looking at eighteen years now? Ninety seven and ninety oh, actually boy. starting like ninety six was recording, okay. and then by the time we moved to San Francisco, the first record came out in Tumult in like ninety eight. Those but those recordings from the previous yeah, couple so of we're, years. Yeah, we're talking twenty five years. Deep yeah, of yeah, OCs. I, guess so. and, I mean, wildly different from start to finish. You know, sure, it's just been like an umbrella name for me. Yeah. Uh, always, you know, the classic Marky Smith, if it's me and your grandmother mm-hmm. playing bongos, it's the fall. It, it's and the I fall. feel like I have taken mm-hmm. that 
a note from him certainly and been yeah. like that's actually true like you can do that you know yeah and but surrounding it, myself with good people this whole time you know but that's the thing is like if this is you've got the this lineup has been a long time this is a long time it's solid really, dudes and you're growing with this lineup which yeah. is exciting to see everybody it, in this lineup certainly has the ability to do any idea i throw at the wall that sticks and yeah. they'd be like yeah we could do that you know and there's no yeah. there's no foot dragging mm -hmm. uh I mean, a lot of emotional foot dragging, but as far sure. as players go, mm -hmm. they're all titans. No, now you've got, this is, you've got the, this is Hex Induction Hour around you, yeah, room right to on. live. I can appreciate that. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite Fall album also? I like the thing. You know it's a tough one because I, I this, they have so many yeah. millions of records, it feels like, but the it's funny, the first one I ever heard, mm -hmm. the first two that I bought was on cassette in Providence, and I it was like middle era, so it was uh, This Nation Saving Grace and Curious Orange, sure. which I immediately fell in love with, and then I sort of worked my way backwards from there, yeah. and then we became label mates with them years later, and I got to see mm -hmm. them live with like Tim Presley in the band at the time, yeah, and then yeah, after yeah. that, he had a bunch of like skinhead guys that were amazing as well. Mm -hmm. And I started digging into stuff in the 90s, the electronic shit, the shit on yeah. the Matador. And you know what, man? Yeah. I'm just like, I'm all in. I'm a fan uh, across the board. Yeah. It'd be, they, the fall would have been hard pressed to find something I thought was shit. It's really, it's one of those things. And there are parallels between, I, first of all, I think that you have like, Marky Smith is like England's James Brown, basically. Yeah. <laughs> to me, where it's just like, he's doing the thing. The people next to him might come, they might go, mm -hmm. but he's on the mission. He wrote the, the, the stagecoach right to the end as well. Yeah. He's like a lifer, not Absolutely. a hobbyist at all. Yeah. I, I was fortunate enough to meet him and get along with him, and mm -hmm. he was always really nice to me because I brought him drugs. So every time I'd yeah. see him, he'd be like, hey, this fucking guy. And I'm That'll like, you remember me? Yeah. And he'd be like, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. I met his drummer recently, uh, and he was like, you know, you saved my ass one time, and I didn't remember the guy because uh -huh. he had a million bandmates. And he's like, you came in the room to say hi to Mark, right after we got off stage and he was just about to yell at me. And the first thing you did was walk up to me and go, hey man, you're a great drummer. That was fucking uh -huh. great. And he said, he saw Mark go, huh. And then he's like, yeah. and then he just simply didn't tear into me. And he's like, went yeah. and got, he's like, he went and got me a drink. He was like, what the fuck is happening? Like Mark was like, yeah. good job today. And he's yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, he just, but you, you, you turn around and you've been doing it. It's a, it's a lifelong yeah. work. And I can say, look, I've been doing this show since I started on, on, WFMU in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then I started the best show in 2000. It's like, so we're 23 trajectory. years deep on this thing. But it's like if somebody had slid a contract in front of me that said, like, <laughs> do you want to sign a 30 year contract? Like, Absolutely uh -huh. not. But it like, it's like one week at a time. Week becomes a yeah. month. A month becomes a year. And, and you grow and you and you becomes your passion and yeah. And you're good at it. I like and what then you do. So every, it makes sense. Every episode is like a brick in this. Uh -huh. For me, that's what it feels to like. To keep everybody out. To keep a wall out <laughs> to keep everybody away from me. But it's a strange thing. It's like when did you realize that you this is this is your life and you've you've afford, you've been afforded the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. To live this life, to be an artist. For, from very early on, this is what I wanted to do. I did not want to work a job. I had a million straight jobs that were very mm -hmm. boring to me. Some of which were good, but I could never keep a job. I would always quit because I would get sick of it and be bored. Um, I was fortunate enough to be doing it for long enough and be in the game long enough and get enough attention from people and, and grow a good fan base of great people that have made it. So since probably, I would say since my mid-30s, I haven't had to work a really straight job anymore. And mm -hmm. that was when it became like I could afford... Yeah, to to pay my rent and buy groceries mm -hmm. and do just the dumb shit that I want to do as like a big man child. But I, you know, thank thank God for that. Because my sister would hear me complain and she'd be like, "Shut mm -hmm. up! I'm still a waitress." She'd be like, "I don't want to hear any more yeah. complaints out of you, asshole." No, that is a very. It's like I know I need the occasional reminder of just like the fortune. Like, yeah. look, it's <laughs> the struggle is the struggle. Yeah. And it's always going to be a struggle, and it's always you know tomorrow the whole thing could fall apart. Of course, but it's like I could go back to working at a grocery store if I had to. But I'm I do yeah. feel honestly all the time I recognize how fortunate I am. I look, I I'm really blessed to be doing what I do and be able to make a living at it. I love absolutely, it. it's like you come up. I feel like you come up like middle class to lower mm -hmm. middle class, which is like my family fluctuated. Dad's a mechanic. My two. mom's a secretary. Yeah, you know? my parents. My father. Start off printing newspapers, mm -hmm. and then they opened a store with making T-shirts. And but there's such a there's such for me there's such a 
it's like such a strength that comes from it. Just like it doesn't take much to stay alive in America. And you start no. to realize that. And it's like curveballs, like you just roll with them. Yeah. If, I mean, it, COVID was the first time. Uh, we, me and my old roommate had a joke that we were bottom feeders because uh-huh. I remember during the first recession, I'm doing air quotes right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our lives actually got a little better. Like I remember, he's like, he's uh-huh. like, he came home and he's like, how are you doing with all this shit with money? And I was like, yeah, fine. And I was like, in fact, I think more people are coming to our shows. <laughs> yeah, because we were still playing cheap shows, you know. And mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, everything's doing good. And he's like, it's because we're dirt bags, and we nicknamed our whole house the dirt bags because we were such <laughs> bottom feeders uh-huh. that we were able to coast by, and most of the problems were above us. They were like, you know, we were, we weren't on the surface. And that's still sort of the case a little bit. Like, I know how to live that way. I mean, obviously, yeah. we've been playing a lot, touring a lot, putting out records. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm doing fine. But it's like, uh, I, I'm prepared for all of it to come crashing down at any moment. I'm always in, I'm always, I'm prepared, mm-hmm. you know? I have always, look, I started off working behind the counter. Mm-hmm. And I always just assumed at some point, I go back to yeah, that. That's where you're going to die. And everything that, keep, <laughs> everything that can keep me, like, from that moment it's just like, well, that's pretty good. Dude, I think I did some of my best work mentally and like writing wise while I was working a job I hated because I was I would take as much time as possible to secretly fuck off yeah. and fuck around and mm-hmm. like write songs while I was at yeah. work, you know? And they'd be like, John, and here's somebody yeah. yelling at me like, shit, I gotta go back to work. Yeah. Like, And then when you have all this free time, it's like tough to, you know, you have to uh, be tenacious and like keep yourself in line. Like I'm a bit of a workaholic, but also mm-hmm. it's like very easy to... Oh, be distracted and yeah. slack off. Which is such a tricky. How do you strike that? Because you need to be open. You need to be receiving things. Mm-hmm. And wh- how do you differentiate between just like, I'm no, like, I'm at work right my now. And it's life like, is very compartmentalized. I can, I've gotten like, I used to joke that like masturbation was a science. And like, you can do this in under four minutes and just keep yourself alive. But I have like relaxation is for me. I'm like, I got like 15 minutes. I can like actually like chill uh-huh. out for 15 minutes and like okay. reboot or i could take a nap for like five minutes i yeah. do like a lot of cat style shit yeah 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 where i'll be like i take like a five minute nap and like a yeah. reboot or like uh you know i have a hot tub so i'll be like i'm just gonna okay. soak for 10 minutes and then dip in the sure. cold tub and that's sort of like yeah i do a, but that's like literally it's like these like incremental little mm-hmm. bits of relaxation i get during the day and then i go right back to work you know yeah but you also have there's that thing where it's like this i forget who said it where it's just like the hardest part about being a writer is convincing my family that when I'm walking around the neighborhood smoking a cigar that I'm at work. Yeah, that you're... And there's just that thing where you're just like... Materializing ideas. It is like the trade-off that, you know... I constantly go to shows and and watch art and, and movies and read books for inspiration i need people around me uh-huh. you know i could never i love the country and i love people i know that are like i want to get a farm and i'm like that sounds yeah. fucking great yeah and i'm not sure if i would keep making music if i lived alone in the middle of nowhere because yeah i need the you know like like atoms bouncing off of each other i need that yeah. in my life i like this city i like mm-hmm. you know la is like perfect because it's a little bit of both it's not like new york yeah, where yeah. you're kind of getting like life in the face all day mm-hmm. la you can like do that thing i'm talking about where you take a 15 minute break and be like or oh, you be like fuck it i'm not going out tonight and you can really you know, but you also, there's the, they, they call it, you know, La La Land was like the old thing, but it's get, get your own head up your ass real easy, real fast here. I do, I catch myself buying my own bullshit all the time uh-huh. and I have to stop myself mm-hmm. and be like, all right, you need a break. You need to yeah. fucking go out in the world and like yeah. have somebody call you an asshole and like reset mm-hmm. your clock for you and like, yeah, yeah. you know, understand that like, yeah. you know, but I, I feel very fortunate that we're here. I've been really lucky in my life too to be in Providence when I was with mm-hmm. all the music and then to move to San Francisco and yeah. walk fucking ass fall ass backwards into yeah. a scene of great music. And then again in LA, once the tech industry basically decimated the mm-hmm. Bay Area, made it impossible yeah. for artists to live outside of Oakland, really, yeah. uh, that it a lot of people moved to LA and there's like a thriving scene here now. And I'm seeing it happen all over the world, like uh, especially in America right now, we got like New York's punk underground and LA's punk underground are insane. Uh, New Orleans is crushing mm-hmm. it right now. It's like, there's all these like, I think it's just been like such a fucked up time yeah. that music is actually doing really well because music like strives in this when there's more shit raining mm-hmm. down on you you can yeah. like, really write a song you know yeah yeah it's it's you got to experience a really amazing period in providence also yeah that I was, was very like, lucky like and the next wave was boring as fuck mm-hmm. so really my like the wave of kids that i met like yeah chippendale and and brian gibson and all the guys from landed and arab on radar and six finger mm-hmm. satellite and uh mm-hmm. dung beetle and drop dead and it's just like i got so fortunate i just my yeah. life has been being born at exactly the right time yeah and i was born mm-hmm. before everybody had a phone in their pocket so i didn't have to grow up with that shit going mm-hmm. on you know i don't envy kids yeah. now it's like very complicated we grew up in a very dumb 
the ignorant Please. time, which was blissful, I think. I, me being in New Jersey and going into New York to see things yeah. was the greatest gift. I got to experience stuff from the music side and on the comedy side because yeah. I was going to both things. Right. I remember I was in New York when the Upright Citizens Brigade moved from Chicago wow. to New York and they're doing their, their, uh, their Sunday night show. And so it's like, it's everybody. And mm-hmm. I'm just getting to see them. 20 do feet their away th- from you. Exactly. Yeah. I'm seeing that. You're, you're actually a part of the show because it's all improv too, right? So they'd like be bringing the audience uh, yeah. in on well, it. Well, they're just like, yeah, but you're, they, they did their thing. They were like serious business. Like we're building worlds here mm-hmm. and it's every heavy hitter in comedy was just, they, they would go on Sunday and just see have each their, other. Yeah, as exactly. Well. Yeah. There was a hangout for them. And then I would just get to do the music side of things. Like, mm-hmm. like, What's a, what's a show? I mean, come on, New York, the Metropolis oh. itself is unbelievable. The, every yeah. time I go to New York, I get to go to an incredible art show. Still, yeah. after living in LA and San Francisco, mm-hmm. I still go to New York and I'm like, yeah. oh, we could go to the fucking museum, I guess. Uh-huh. I was like, what's going yeah. on? Oh, a huge Basquiat show mm-hmm. that's just opening here today of the yeah. most work of his I've ever seen. You know? Yeah, it's yeah, it is. It, 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 it's, it's important to remember these things that just like, like we get we got to experience yeah. the things. And it's like, what what's a show that you saw that you wish you could like project to people to be like, God, so oh, many. I saw it and it's in my I head and I a just wish I could show you what I saw. Because I was in Providence, it was so niche sometimes mm-hmm. that I would see bands play for fucking nobody sometimes. Yeah. Like, I mean, one that automatically comes to mind was seeing like uh, the Oblivions play for like 30 people. Yeah. The King Brothers from Japan and San Francisco yep. playing at, King, at Chemo's for mm-hmm. nobody and putting on one of the most intensely terrifying shows. Seeing Masana play mm-hmm. at the... Uh, uh, the Playhouse, which I believe was owned by the guy from fucking Aerosmith, Masana threw a table at us while he was playing, and, okay. and there was like nobody there because it's like yeah. a you know a noise musician seeing Drop Dead when I was a kid and being absolutely terrified of them and not understanding mm-hmm. what they were doing because I was into punk, but I hadn't really dived into hardcore at that point. And seeing their show, and I was like, it was like almost too much for my hard drive to compute, you know. And then yeah. like oh, having it grow on me, and now it's like. I, I can't imagine it. I'm not a venue in my life. Yeah, it just like Providence was great for accidentally seeing shows mm-hmm. before a band like kind of blew up or found their fall because like, people would come through, going through Boston, New York, whatever, and play like Babyhead or fucking uh, the Met Cafe. So was, yeah, so well, everybody, Billy I mean, Childish. I saw him with laryngitis mm-hmm. play there when I was Amazing. a kid. You know, I mean, I got the same thing with Hoboken with Maxwell. Yeah, Maxwell's is the shit. I had Maxwell's and I had New. Every Brunswick. time we played there, we played with great bands. So we played with fucking. Uh, uh, what was it uh, Dead Moon? I think, or not Dead wow. Moon? What was the band they had after? Straight Arrows. Or, Straight Arrows. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or, yeah uh, with, with or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, but got to hang out with those guys, you yeah. know. Yeah. So it, it's like New Jersey's great. No, it's I'm a like fan. the going to New Brunswick. It was just like you go to New Brunswick. It would be just like yeah, I'm going to see some bandits at the Court Tavern, and you go, and it's just like. Oh, there's some an opening. They're just coming through from Kentucky. It's this band Slint, and they're uh-huh. just doing a thing. It's just like in the well, teenagers at the time. Yeah, it's like well, I I saw a Slint for the little window I that saw they ever US played. Maple live. play their first time in Providence in uh, Fort Thunder's kitchen, mm-hmm. and I had already left the show because there were like five bands. I was like, fuck this, I'm going home, and I was drunk, yeah. uh-huh. and I didn't like being drunk when I was a kid. So I was like, I gotta get out of here, and I lived across the street, and I got across the street, and then realized I just left my bike there in the in the fucking <laughs> building, and I was like, fuck, so I like <laughs> like walked back, put my shoes mm-hmm. on, walked back. And walked in right in time to see U.S. Maple, who were a seminal weirdo rock band Absolutely. from Chicago. And being like, I, sometimes you see those bands, same thing happened the first time I saw Arab on Radar, where you're just like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Same thing with Six Free Satellite 2, seeing them and being like, I don't, like, same thing with Drop Dead, just being like, I don't understand what this this is. And yeah. that's exciting. That gets my brain kick off. No, you know? it was like when suddenly you'd go to Maxwell's and it'd be like, oh, it's Carolina Rainbow. I live with that guy. With, uh, with the <laughs> Zip Code Rapists. Or oh, yeah. Opening. So it's early Greg Turkington. Turkington's a genius. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, I'm just like at their mercy for, yeah. for the night. And I don't know what this is. Talk and, about an art explosion, too. You're like, yeah. everything is soaked in cat piss. And it's like, a, yeah. like everybody's 10 feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, no, that a was sensory overload. Those yeah. Bands. And that was just like. And that's one thing I will say. There's a beauty to like. There was no way to learn about these things. So everything kind of was a mystery. Unless yeah. you actually went up to the person in the band and asked them questions. There's a lot of happenstance, a lot of uh, c- calling clubs, mm-hmm. mailing cassettes around, shit like that. Yeah. I mean, it was it was primitive, and I think the payoff might have been 
a little nicer because you had to work for it. But obviously, oh I mean, yeah. I, I certainly know more about music now, probably because of the current way the world is, because you can just look it up. So now it's like, I know about a punk band in yeah. New Orleans because mm -hmm. I was just like, their band camp's amazing, mm -hmm. you know, like. And that's the thing. It's like, look, I'm not going to say like, oh, it's it sucks now. No, it was pretty, better back in the it's day. It's pretty awesome right now. <laughs> yeah. It's just different. Yeah, and I think sure. I'm, I appreciate the fact that I got to experience the two settings. Oh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I grew up at the perfect time. Yeah. I couldn't have been, and I'll be dead right in time. I yeah. Think. yeah. Well, that's, let's get me out of knock here. Knock on wood. I always thought Paul Rubens would outlast me. But, uh huh. Well, yeah, it's been a fucking rough yeah. week. <laughs> the, it, yeah, it has. The, um, yeah, like like just to that point you're making. Like when I would, you'd hear like, can what's can sound like? Okay, go to like you look for like some record guide, see if you could figure like a trouser press guy. It's like just okay, go to talk to somebody well, at the counter. Yeah, or you ask at Pier Platters. I would go to Pier I got, Platters. I got a rude guy who works behind a yeah. counter at a record store. I'd be like, which you one do can? I want? Yeah. Here? yeah. But then it's like suddenly you're looking for a can album. When yeah. you find that can album. You kind of better like that. Can they album. were they were for me the band that changed my entire life. The man who played that band for me changed mm -hmm. my whole life, changed the trajectory of my life. And uh, I mean, I've told the story in interviews before, but I was it was like maybe the second time I took LSD, and okay. he, I would always go with him. He's an older guy, and he was like an old drug head. And he'd be like, come to my house, it's safe. We'd hang out and trip. Mm -hmm. It was like old kind of you know, definitely like an occult worshiper guy and a guy. Uh -huh. But he put on monster movie for me. Wow! And I sat there in total silence completely having my mind blown and then the second it was over i was like can you play it again and he yeah. was sober and he's like sure yeah. and then the third time i was like can you play it again and he was like nope <laughs> he was like i'm not but, playing yeah, it again. he's yeah. like you can go buy the record yeah. he's like but now we're gonna listen to uh blue oyster cult and i was like okay that'll do sure but but, but seriously that day was like that was the day i definitely decided that i was gonna play music when i no, heard monster movie i i was like i could maybe do this in 20 or 30 years probably get there th th to me they are still in the best possible sense, still a mystery to me. And it's yeah, like every time the records, it's like I'm listening to the first time. On a some... band shouldn't have worked either. It was like so, a, a true Motley Crue. And like, absolutely. And with, they also made a lot with not very much. They record themselves on two track. Yeah. Uh, he's only playing a fucking Farfisa, but he's so such a wild mm -hmm. player that it's unrecognizable, you know? The level, yeah. And that, I've told, I told Paul from the band, I said, if there's an American can, it's OCs. Because it's every color of the rainbow. Yeah, we wear that on our sleeve. And it's heavily. just, it's just I'm like a fan. I am. It's just what the to to get to experience a band that is deep into their run, but is still like pedal to the metal. Like, oh yeah, we are not. We're not half ass. It's only going to get weirder from here on out. I'm and hoping. I've no interest the in greatest? straightening out. Like yeah. as you, as you get older, do you find yourself just being like? I don't want to do anything really that straight. I mean, it's it's okay to have things that are like sort of forward moving and, and like verse, course, verse, but I always like it to have a little bit of hink in it. Yeah. And I think I always compare it to like Scott Walker. Like I think he had the greatest trajectory where he was like huge pop star yeah. all the way down to his last records being like, that's a tough listen. Yeah, like, you know, exactly, like, where or Michael yeah. Yonkers, same thing where yeah. he's like, I just want to make guitar noise now that I'm in my 70s. You're like, you fucking I, weird man. I love the fact that like, you look at like, even like a guy like Neil Young where he's Still like- Still holding the torch he too. Is just, he knows, like, he's like, what? At what point do I? Why should I be more he, normal? Now? I just saw him play recently, and he brought a giant, like, gothic pump organ on stage. Yeah, and he did Mister Soul. Yeah, I on saw, that you were at that show. I yeah. saw him at the Greek. I saw him at the Greek here. too. Yeah, I which one was, did you see? I went to the first night. I think I saw the second one. And the dude, audience. that moment, that was the moment in the show for me because I love that song. Mm -hmm. And him, he's so fucking charming too. Yeah, like he's just talking to the stage. He's come up and go, "Hey man, how's it going?" Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're like, "All right, let's go, move it." Move and it. you're just like, "That man's very charming." He's a, but he's like, he's it, weird in the, and it's just like you start to realize like. Why would you not be weird? He can't like, even help it, though. He's also Canadian, and they have a sort of, mm -hmm. there's like a, a, a kink in Canadians that sure. just gives them like a, like you, I, I'll be watching a movie, and I'll be like, this movie Canadian? And then I look uh -huh. it up, I'm like, sure enough, you it see, is. Yeah, you yeah. just tell, you know? Yeah. It's like, you're reading something like, what is that, cardamom? There's, it's like a, there's like a hint uh, of something uh, in there. They're uh, like, I don't usually yeah. get this little, flavor. Little Canadian music and Canadian yeah. uh, film, especially, yeah. certainly have that You always of, look for the mountain ranges if it's a thing, yeah. and you see like, Watching like the movie Jackie Chan had the movie Rumble in the Bronx, and then you look and there's these snow capped mountains yeah, in the background. It's in like Calgary. It's like, I, don't, I don't think that's the Bronx. I don't know if they have snow capped mountains. So yeah, it's really a thrill to see how 
hard you work at this and how hard you've always worked at it and to see it pay the dividends creatively and that you have a fan base that is like on board for the ride yeah i don't know i don't even sometimes i'm like thanks guys for sticking the fuck around i didn't expect you to still be here but, you know, so. uh, we but, have i feel like we are lifers and i feel like in a weird way our fan base has a sort of similar quality we're like Sometimes we can give people something that they need that maybe they didn't know they needed. That's and we get that back from them as well. Well, you need yeah. to be ahead of them. If you keep giving them, it's like I was thinking like the Ramones, where it's just like the Ramones, they did the first four, five perfect albums. Mm-hmm. They start off like literally perfect. And yeah. then it's just like they kind of thought about changing with the Phil Spector record. Producers changed. And then they kind of like pulled back and then. Like, well, why would I ever need a Ramones album since you gave me five perfect mm-hmm. ones? Like, if you're not, and conversely, the fall, it's like suddenly he's like, they get poppier. They you know, suddenly, the here comes the electronics. shifting gears like, a lot. And he, I mean, I think that probably had a lot to do with his drug of choice as well, but he certainly was like sure. willing to throw caution to the wind a lot and also go with whim. And I think that's a big pleasure in art to be able to be established enough and have a fan base that are willing to let you fuck around. Yes. And that they're there for on the whole, if you deliver, they'll follow yeah. you. It's like, I mean, you talk about like infotainment scan or, or mm-hmm. code selfish, these records, it's just like you play that and you play something, you play like slates and you say like, are these the same band And people? Are like, well, outside of the singer, the singer's the same. I don't, the singer sounds like he's band, a, yeah. yeah. But it's like that violin dancers. He, and, I love, I love their playfulness and also their uh, just. Uh, I mean, they were also a very tongue in cheek band. They're very specific. Where it's like mm-hmm. the fall. I always, I forget whose quote it was, but it's like if you're ripping off the fall, then go fuck yourself because you're ripping off the fall. It's like the one you can't yeah. rip off the fall. It was like yeah. so definitive and well, so it's, it's, yeah, specific. It's, it's like it's un. They're un because because it's just like. It's clear who you're it's fighting from right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, don't like, bite the fall. Yeah, yeah, whenever you hear... Thankfully, uh, that was an early 2000s thing, and I think it sort of subsided. Every now and then I'll yeah. hear a band, I'm like, really? Come on. Yeah. I remember like hearing like the pavement when you'd be just kind of like... A little bit. Like, they, they had their own thing going, too, but I, I hear that, too. You know, it's funny. Uh, I think it was Mark Riley. We're friends with mm-hmm. him from sure. just going over there a lot. And he's such a sweetheart, you know. And the Hanley brothers wrote those great Absolutely, books. Like yeah. all those cats are really cool. Like, yep. I, I was fortunate enough to put out that live record with them a while ago. But they were talking about uh, at Mark's funeral. Like, I, 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 this is like you know third person story I'm hearing here. But it was like two Scottish guys beat the shit out of each other at the wake or something, and that the whole uh, band were like, <laughs> Mark like, would have loved yeah, this. Like, it's yeah, like this, Mark's sisters like screaming yeah. like, get off of him! And they were like, he would have loved that these two yeah. Scots were beating the shit out of each other at his the funeral. You know, fitting tribute yeah, all the yeah. way to the end. It um. But yeah, it, it as a fan, look, I'm not a Grateful Dead fan. I know <laughs> Paul is a Grateful Dead fan, and I well, always, we all have our weaknesses. We all have it's our, okay, but I like Billy Joel, so I get a lot of sure. Yeah. <laughs> look, we all have our our things. He's got some blind spots, but I, the thing that the Grateful Dead do and that like Fish do, I was always just like, I where's mine. Like where uh, where's yeah. mine? Where's I love long form and I love improvisation. Yeah. So I'm all about the 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 idea of it. It just has to be. It's funny because we were just saying last night. I saw a Grateful Dead cover band last mm-hmm. night. I do not like the Dead. Sure, this fucking band was great, and I was watching them, and I was like, you know why they're good? Because they just sound better than the Dead. They, they were, it was that band Richard's Picks. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, and I was yeah, like, yeah. they sing well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not out of phase. The guitar playing's not thin and weird. And I was yeah. watching them, and I was like, yeah, I was like, fuck. The Dead did have some good... They picked good songs, too. They yeah. obviously were doing just like a short set. But mm-hmm. I was like, but they were doing it really well. And to me, The Dead was always like like hanging on by a thread in a way that yeah. I found sort of repulsive Yeah, me. but But I, I... There were points where I was just like, I wish I got this because... This is fan they, service. They have, this yeah, is like, they really are. They have their moments, but you really have to dig into it. It's like live show shit. And, yeah. And then also, oh, man, this is going to come off poorly in an interview, but uh, their their fans can be a bit irritating for me. So. What? <laughs> I feel you like Cartman from, from, from yeah. South Park, yeah. not He's liking like, hippies. I don't yeah. know anything against hippies, but no, look, I used to go to their shows to buy drugs back uh-huh. in the day, and I had to deal with a lot of like early 90s like uh, Jerry Garcia band shows and shit like sure. that. And uh-huh. I just remember being exhausted. Whenever I get home, I'm like, fuck, at least I got a sheet of acid out of it. But holy shit, I'm exhausted, yeah. you know? The price you're paying. Yeah. But you you fill a void in my life where we it's just like- We put a little bit of punk in it. I just wish there was a band <laughs> that would spread out when they spread out. Yeah. Keep it tight when they keep it tight. And just 
do a lot of stuff. Like yeah. they're they're they. I wanted a band that would be there for me and not be I, like. I got your back. We're Tommy. gone for We're five here. years. We'll be back. It's like no. Uh, my plan is a yearly release until the day I die, and hopefully that never has to be anything but. And I always plan on just doing whatever strikes you know our whim. Like That's whatever amazing. we want to do, we can do and get away with. You know. You ever feel like you want to do like a, a like the uh, man that one record was it? Memory of a cut off head is. We, I'm actually talking to Bridget about coming down here to do some shows soon, just a real simple duo. But I love doing stuff with strings, with mm. horns. I love the lighter stuff. I love mm. the heavy shit. I mean, I'm so fortunate because I'm just a general music lover and mm. lover of the arts so that I can yeah. be like into like hip hop and yep. death metal and country. You know, I was like, I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. If it's good, yeah. I like it. You like the good stuff. I'm it, approaching my own yeah. music the way that my tastes mm. vary, you know? Because that record to me... Although I don't plan on doing a hip hop record. I'm not going to okay, do that to no anybody. Time. That won't well, happen. Okay, well... I would like to apologize for the alternate <laughs> sure. universe where yes, that happened. where that did happen. Sorry, and, everybody. Yeah, the your D.D. D. King uh, era. <laughs> yeah, the, you, uh, you two B.B. King together at last. But that record, I love that's a, That for me, that's like a... a perfect nighttime record it was a fun one to write what a beautiful and that album. string arrangement woman heather oh lockie's incredible she is actually on a record doing strings that i have coming up soon that hasn't been announced yet but i did some work with her recently and she's always a pleasure she's a fucking genius also a great bassoon player which is another fun mm. instrument to work with i do love symphonic stuff you know i was a big fan of zombies and like a lot of that, uh, what's like like giles giles fripp like oh yeah yeah, you know, yeah. king crimson stuff stuff that worked with mm. like you know not necessarily prog rock, but like big orchestration stuff, even like Sparks or yeah, uh, you know, just taking, sweet, taking just like, full advantage of yeah. the disco, you know, yeah. Bohan and even with strings and shit like that. Love anything to do with those, uh, you know, just, you know, it's funny as this morning on a whim, I listened to Dark Magus, um, which I'd owned for years, mm -hmm. that 74 Live Miles Davis record. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, but that record kicked my ass so hard this morning. And I was like, why am I not listening to this record all the time? Yeah. Like it had just been sitting on the shelf mm -hmm. and this morning I was like, ah, I'll give it another chance. And it really it, like it, th and it's, it's right up my alley. But this morning mm -hmm. it really clicked and I listened to the entire album at top volume until when it finally stopped and it went quiet. I realized my neighbors were arguing and I was okay. like, I wonder if I had anything to do with that. Like, yeah, cause it was loud enough. They yeah. certainly could hear it early in the morning. Yeah. You but know? these are the, it makes sense that these are the, some of the, the icons and the towering figures for you, these are the inspirations because you are one of them for a lot of people. Oh, and I appreciate John, it's that. The, you play, you coming playing the new album, and the new album is called Intercepted Message, and it will be out this week, August eighteenth. Yep, yes. on, in the Red Records, and it is, it's amazing. It's another triumph in a thank you very much series of triumphs. You're the Michael Jordan of. <laughs> of it means I'm arguing Rock. with Scotty Pippen when I leave here. Sure, yeah. <laughs> You're going to argue with who would each person be if they I, were. Who I, else? I, I, Ray, I'm not going to say any names. Right off the top of my head, I thought of I was like, I know who my nemesis is. Well, let me think. Who? But in your band, if you're if you're Jordan now, who do we go? Oh got? shit! Uh, I guess Tim would be like a tiny Larry Bird. Okay. You know, I don't. I'm not going uh -huh. like Lakers entirely, mm -hmm. but you know, sure. I got all the players in there. Everybody in my band is a ringer, and I. Yeah. That's, it is definitely certainly a group effort. Uh, we some of our last records we all wrote together. Some of them we bring in. We sh kind of shift gears, but everybody's comfortable with the systems, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And in the end, everybody gets paid equally in my band. We're like a socialist organization, so yeah, yeah. So it's just like you keep it. You, uh... you play on the song, you get paid. You play it live, you get paid. You know, mm -hmm. so. Everybody, I think because of that, it's like a real working wage that people bring it, you know? That's, I mean, we still require energy back from the audience, but like everybody's always prepared to, you know, get out there. Yeah. And that is the one thing. It's just, like, it's always like, it's like. Paul calls it sports. It's which like, I think is a fair analogy. That, is, it's like, that makes it's like Australian is, rules rugby rock and roll. Exactly. You know? yeah. Because it's not a lot of timeouts. And the shows are kind of the length of a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's like, like uh, for anybody who's not into it, they're like, what are they? This is the third fucking quarter? How yeah, fucking long is exactly. this? Exactly. It's like, well, there's the quarter, there's it's four. It's funny now that we just kind of veered a little bit away from the long form stuff because we were doing that for so long. Like my buddy in Austin, who's known me for like 20 years, came out to see a show only because he my other friend was there and he had written him and he was like Hey, uh, he's like, let me know what three songs they're playing. Kind of busting my balls. I like, we're only gonna play three songs, and then yeah. he wrote it back. He's like, dude, they're just doing a bunch of quick punk bangers. Good. And he was like, I'll be right there. Yeah, and he came exactly. out. And he's like, it's the first time I've seen you in years. He hates the long form shit. And he's like, yeah. you're back on like regular song mm -hmm. lengths. And I was like, yeah, you know, and who knows? We'll get back in there. But that's the beauty of it because it'll just be kind of like 
I think that was 25 minutes long. Yeah, we really did get in there. I, I don't know what the fuck changed. I guess, you know, we just, we sort of, we're temperamental too. We like move in and out of ideas and stuff gets boring to us too. So if you're, yeah. you're getting bored, chances are somebody on stage is probably a little bored too. <laughs> it shines through. So we're trying to keep it exciting for ourselves mm-hmm. and the audience. It's know? like, yes, where you had Rick Wakeman ordering uh, a pizza. He was or ordering, yeah, he would get like curry delivered. He'd be like eating behind the keyboard, staring <laughs> the, like tales of topographic oceans. Era. Yeah. He's just like, this band's not for me anymore. Yeah, I'm no. eating on stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, but John, thank you so much for this. This has thank meant so, so much to me. What a thrill. Favorite band. Can't thank you enough for thank doing you, this. Thank you, man. Cheers. What a great time. Thanks. There it is. That's when I know we're back. What's up, everybody? How'd you like that? OC's full album. John Dwyer. Amazing conversation. Thank you to OCs for coming down and making that happen. And to everybody who worked on the show, whether it was Brett uh, Davis and Brett Boehm and Lisa, Liza. It was Lisa. Lisa. Is the the OCs uh, engineer, front of house engineer. Amazing. Who who, uh, recorded it with with me. Thank you. uh, And you are Andrew Gleason. Well, thank you to Lisa. Thank you to Andrew Gleason. Our very own. Thank you. You did an amazing job. And thank you to everybody who made that happen. What a great show. What a great band. 201-989-0012. Hello, Best Show. Hey, Tom. Hey, who's this? Uh, This is Nick in Portland. Nick in Portland. How's it going, Nick? That was that was incredible. Right. That was incredible. Uh just uh wonderful interview. Ben and OC's fan forever. And uh just um it was it was really cool hearing you and uh and John uh talk about the parallels between um the best show and the OCs because it, uh look when one you're... of my uh mem- You go, you go. What's that? No, Nick, you go. I'm listening to you now. You're my guest. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> no, no, no. Go, um, go ahead. Go talk. The floor is yours. So towards the end of 2013, I, I was living in San Francisco and uh, went to a show. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to keep this short. Um, went to a. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm hyped up. That was incredible. It was it was incredible. Nick, um, you're feeling you're, yeah. you're feeling good tonight, huh? I love the OCs. I do too. I just want to ask you a question. You be honest. Are you getting yes. into a little bit of that old uh, gran- Granny's medicine jar, right? A little bit, a little bit <laughs> Granny's medicine jar. What are you up to? What are you, what's what's happening for you right now? What you do? It's just really hot up here, Tom. It's it's we're 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 going through a heat wave. So the, you're just having uh, heat stroke, is what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, you're starting to hallucinate. Got a castaway situation yeah. going here. You know, I mean, I'm gonna not look like a hot dog. You're gonna chase me around the island. <laughs> <laughs> One time in my life, I would yeah. like to laugh the way you just laughed. One time. One time. <laughs> kidding. Tell me the OC's thing you wanted to tell me, Nick. Okay. Um towards the end of 2013, I was living in San Francisco. Uh you were going off the air at WFMU. I uh, went to a show at a, a cool uh little venue in the basement of a video store. Uh one of the guys who did the theme song for the best show was performing there. We all listened to the last best show at WFMU. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, and then three days later, um, went to the Winter Coat Drive, uh, um, and it was the last uh, OC show for for a minute. Um, uh, John Dwyer uh, went on stage and said, uh, "This is going to be it for a while." It was the last show with with that lineup. He did. Uh, uh, they gave out uh, all of their merch for free, and it, it was it was the end of their their San Francisco era, and it was just the end of the. 
best show WF and you era. It was the end of uh, that era of OCs in San Francisco, and just you guys talking about the parallels between between you two. I just I that was wow. a, that was a weird week, and my friend Nick. Yeah. Yes. Look at us now. We both packed up our tents in 2013. Jump forward yep. 10 years. I'm doing better yep. than I've ever done in my freaking life. I agree. I'm happier than I've ever been in my freaking life. And look at those C's. They're on strong. fire now. They're on fire. They got two dry. They got the drum. They got the whole thing. It doesn't get any better. Could not be better. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank OCs for playing, John Dwyer, everybody doing it. Paul Catrone, thank you for making that all happen. You're the best. And Lisa and Brett Davis, Brett Bowen for filming. Everybody who's in there. I know I'm missing people. Wes, I want to thank Wes, the amazing Wes. How could I forget Wes? Wes, I'm sorry. It's very tough. No, thank you, Wes. You're the best. But most of all, Andrew Gleason. Thanks so much, Tom. Well, thank you for the great sounds you gave all of us with OCs. The Best Show is produced in partnership with the Forever Dog Podcast Network. The show is hosted by Tom Sharpling and features John Worcester, Michael Lisk, Jason Gore, and Pat Byrne. The show is produced and written by Jason Gore, Pat Byrne, Michael Lisk, Brett Davis, John Worcester, and Tom Sharpling. The Best Show is executive produced by Tom Sharpling, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Co-executive produced by Jason Gore and Pat Burns, segment producer Michael Lisk. The show is engineered and mastered by Andrew Gleason and Wesley Knapp. Graphic design, video editing, and social media by Brett Davis. Website and technical support by Martine Sellis. And the show is recorded at Forever Dog Studios in Los Angeles. Support The Best Show on Patreon over at patreon.com slash thebestshow and follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Best Show for Life. That's Best Show number four, Life. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.